constant talk about the history of classic menswear, and Bo Brummel in particular, left its mark on me. Then I saw Emma as well as Pride and Prejudice last year. Yes, I'm a late bloomer concerning Jane Austen. And then there are so many gorgeous pictures of Regency gentlemen out there, as well as people on Instagram really cherishing the era. In the end, I went down the rabbit hole and I decided to become a Regency gentleman too. What do I need to make? I need a shirt, a waistcoat, trousers, a tailcoat and some accessories. I bought the patterns along with the corset pattern for another video at Nehilinia Patterns. I intended to stay true to my color palette, which means earth tones, dark green and maybe golden highlights. So I got white linen for the shirt, wool white diamond twill for the trousers, a fabulous green brocade for the waistcoat and dark brown flannel for the tailcoat. I have to say at this point that if in doubt I will prioritize my personal taste and preferences over historical accuracy. I have done this with all of my outfits and it just works best for me. I mean, I'm not a museum piece, right? Let's start with the easiest part, a pirate shirt a la Bernadette Banner. Since there are so many videos out there about this piece, I will keep this part very short. Now, let me have a look. Where is my wand? The fabric. So, what was the spell? Um, ah. Kitchen pan, kitchen pan, short attention span. Voila! It's so fluffy! Later on I decided to make a second one from IKEA Beaumoul, which is usually my mock-up fabric, so I have a lot of it right here anyway. I bought silk for the necktie and thought that the golden yellow doesn't work that well with the bright white linen. I just wanted to have style options, okay? Anyway, let's do that again. Fabric, wand, the spell actually works in German too. Küchenpfanne, Küchenpfanne, kurze Aufmerksamkeitsspanne. Et voilà. Since the fabric for the waistcoat is so gorgeous, I had to make it next. The pattern and manual were actually pretty good. I made it completely by hand, um, even though I like to use my sewing machine as much as I can because I'm impatient and not an experimental archaeologist. However, making the waistcoat by hand helped me to really understand how a traditional white pocket is made. I could not understand this with all the modern manuals because everything is done by machine and to hide the machine stitches you need to add complexity to the process by turning pieces here and there, if you know what I mean. I have made a couple of waistcoats before this one, so basically I knew what to do. Except I wanted a single layer back to make the waistcoat less isolating. And then the pattern also included a high standing collar, which is very different from the waistcoats I made before. However, this didn't pose serious problems, and you can hide small imperfections with a couple of hand stitches anyway. Back to the silk neckties. I think they really work well with the shirt and the waistcoat already. I mean, look at this. This got me really excited to move on with the next piece. For the trousers I had to decide between breeches and pantaloons. I went for pantaloons. I just had this feeling in my gut that I need pantaloons. I don't know. I have made trousers once before, but with a fly front. So the biggest challenge was the fall front. I had my difficulties with the pattern and I have to say that I already tore a little hole in the front but everything else went fine, and the hole is absolutely repairable. The seam allowance was included in the pattern and actually I really don't like that. I prefer patterns where I can probably mark the line where I want to sew and decide how much seam allowance I want for myself. At least the choice of fabric proved me right again. I opted for wool white pantaloons and to add a bit of fancy I went for the diamond twill. I think it works well, what do you think? Generally, I finished the trousers at the top first and then try to make the trouser legs as slim as possible while still retaining enough freedom of movement. I've done a lot of medieval choices in the early time of my sewing career and this procedure always worked best for me. Finally, I had to make a tailcoat. 
this was the biggest challenge of the whole project. For example, I have pet stitched a collar before, but never a lapel. Sadly, the pattern I bought for the tail coat was the worst. The smallest size was an EU50, while I usually wear a 46 or 48. On top of that, the arm size were huge initially, and I think this contradicts the tailoring aesthetic of the period. So I spent hours and hours just on the mock-up until I had something that fit me. Pet stitching the collar and lapel wasn't actually that difficult. The chosen fabric was a flannel from Johnston's of Elgin, and I was a little bit afraid when I started to cut it, as I am with all the expensive fabrics, but I didn't mess it up. I needed several tries to set in the sleeves until the shoulders looked okay. For the reveal I also prepared a chatelain for my pocket watch that fits the color palette as well as riding boots. Thanks for the idea to alter modern boots to Tiger Petri aka the Regency Gentleman. He runs a blog including a lot of helpful articles. Have a look at the video description. Finally I spent several hours top stitching most of the tail coat because I like hand stitched crisp edges. Now it's time to show you how everything turned out. In case you are as enchanted by Nadine as I am, you can find her on YouTube and Instagram. Have a look at the video description. So yeah, this was my big sewing project 2021. I hope to make more in 2022 and it looks good so far, but I will have to see how much time and energy I can accumulate alongside my family and my full-time job. However, this year's plan is a complete late Victorian morning suit. Stay tuned for that. I'm very very grateful for everyone who is supporting my work by just watching my videos to the end and sharing it with your friends in online forums etc. I'm mostly running on applause and caffeine I think. So every subscriber and view counts. Thank you 
and see you soon.